Today I took a break from working on the uh, cardboard electric football bases uh, because I wanted to focus on these figures. I got these two months ago and uh, this is as far as I've gotten with them. Believe it or not, I actually did go out quite a bit of work today on these figures, uh, particularly cleaning up their, uh, their faces and helmets. And uh, I think I did a pretty good job on most of these. But um, I did want to go ahead and paint one of these figures completely and add all the details I'm planning sort of uh, a proof of concept not only for viewers to see but <laughs> for me to reference as I, I do more of these figures so I want to show you that. The goal with this batch of figures was always to try to push the limits on my abilities uh, to get away from the classic Tudor uh, colors and um, techniques and to try to uh, sort of bridge the gap between uh, my previous efforts and some of those beautiful figures that uh, professionals are producing. Now I'm certainly not there but I uh, I am getting a, a little closer so let me show you that figure. I'm probably going to turn this uh, uh, light on the phone off and on. Uh, so here we go. It's uh, it's a Pittsburgh Steelers uniform that doesn't really exist. It's, it's actually elements of different uniforms from different eras. We have the color rush pants with uh, a yellow jersey. You have to go back to 94 and then back to the 30s and 40s to find the yellow jerseys. Now the Steelers do practice in yellow jerseys, so that's kind of similar. And uh, of course the typical black helmet. And uh, this project, of course, is uh, all about adding some specific details. Now one of the reasons the jersey is yellow because the decals I have for this project are actually uh, away team Steelers decals, the black Pittsburgh Steelers font. Uh, 42 of those sticker uh, decals left, so I wanted to go ahead and use them. That's one of the reasons that we're rolling with a yellow jersey here. Um, now, as far as decals go, or details go, let's, uh, well, obviously, you know, as we know, I'm actually really good at um, freehanding the Pittsburgh Steelers logo on these figures because I've done so many of them now. Let's turn the light off so we can get a better look at that. Try to... It's a little difficult to focus without the light on. This might not appear very good on the uh, camera. Well, I'll keep turning the light on and off. Um, I accomplished that with just a toothpick for the uh, yellow circle. It's not perfect. Uh, it, can't, it can never be perfect. It's, you know, at, with an inch and a half tall figure. Uh, and I used Sharpie markers, ultra-fine Sharpie markers for the yellow, red, blue stars. And also for the black line that uh, simulates the word Steelers that appears on the helmets. Let's turn the light back on. We, we can't get close enough to this figure for you to really uh, see that. But uh, that's pretty good. We, you can almost see the black line there. Now we've also gone ahead and put a Steelers logo on the jersey itself there on the left pack. Same uh, design. And uh, the goal with this was to uh, add some detail, but we got to keep it out of the way of the jersey number decal. And we've also got to keep it out of the way of the shoulder number decal. So that's why it's right there. And uh, I'm going to apply uh, the decals to this one sometime this week and go ahead and put a face mask on as well. And hopefully it won't get in the way uh, of the number itself. Uh, now as far as other de uh, details, uh, the shoulder stripes... Uh, easy to do with a Sharpie. They look much better from further away, obviously. When you get up close to these, you can kind of see, oh yeah, he did this with a magic marker, a Sharpie marker. And uh, that's just the way it is. Um, I would love to be more precise, but there's only so precise you can get with these. Um, I would have loved to have actually put three stripes on there, but if I'd have gotten, tried to gotten any closer to the uh, yellow, or to the... Uh, stripe below it, I would have risked uh, not having a nice yellow stripe in the middle. In fact, I could stand to put a little yellow paint in there between the uh, stripes. Okay, I'm going to put this down because there's no brush sealer on it and I don't want to uh, risk um, getting any more paint. I, you know, I've already had to repaint the uh, base once just to touch it up. Now, uh, as far as the, the leg stripe, like I said, this is the Color Rush uh, outfit. So, that was just a toothpick. 
nice big glop of paint and I just followed the mold seam of the figure. Uh, you can do that for most of the Fab Fives and it looks really good, especially the uh, the lineman figure. You get that nice sort of S shape. And of course, on the Color Rush outfit, the uh, stripe stops right about where I've stopped it on these. Now, to be honest, the uh, stripe could be thicker because it's very thick on the Color Rush outfit, but because this is a custom outfit and I'm very happy with the way these stripes turned out, I'm just going to leave it as is. Now we'll go down to the shoes. The only detail I added to the shoes was the swoosh. Surprisingly easy to do with a, a Sharpie marker. Uh, that's all I'm prepared to do as far as detail on any of the shoes. Now, some of my figures will have yellow shoes, some will have white shoes, and some will have black shoes. There won't be a swoosh on the, the, the figures with black shoes. Now, um, we'll get to the arms later. Now, if, I feel like I did a, a serviceable job on the helmet stripe. It's crooked. Uh, it looks like somebody applied a decal crooked, but that's the point from afar. It does look like a decal, but it's actually painted with a toothpick, and I cleaned it up with uh, black paint on a toothpick before I applied the uh, helmet logo. So that looks pretty good. Now, look between the helmet and the uh, jersey. See the white? That's, I actually took a toothpick with some white paint and, and got in there to sort of emulate either the white uh, plate at the bottom of the back of a Steelers helmet or perhaps a, 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 a neck collar that you see in a lot of uniforms. So that could be either one of those things. You take your pick. That also assists greatly in uh, obscuring the... Uh, the line between the helmet and the jersey. That's a very problematic to, uh, to reconcile, as I've discovered in uh, past projects. Now, the arms uh, will, all, will each be different on every figure. I've got that written down and all planned up. On this one, I opted for yellow gloves and black wristbands, and that looks very good, in my opinion. That really pops out on the figure. Uh, the only other detail I can think of that you may be curious about is that white square or rectangle between the face and the uh, helmet stripe. That's the that's intended to be the logo plate on the, the Steelers helmet. I, most of them say Riddell. It really depends on the, the name brand of the helmet the uh, player is wearing. But there is a chance that's going to get covered up by the face mask. If that happens, I'm just going to paint a white uh, spot on the face mask itself to emulate that as well. Um, technically the face mask is supposed to cover that up, but we're dealing with a different scale here with the face mask. The face masks on these figures will be much thicker than an actual face mask, so that's something we just gotta keep in mind. Now the only other f uh, details on this figure, I didn't plan this, I just wanted to try it, and uh, well, it turns out it, it looks pretty good, and that's the towel sticking out of the pants back there. Uh, I was worried that that would look like some kind of mistake, but it actually looks okay. The secret here, folks, is to not just draw a square or rectangle sticking down at a, a straight angle. The secret is to put it at an oblique angle and put some waves in it. And that's easy to do with a toothpick and some white paint. And if you don't like it, you, then you can take, in this case, some black paint and uh, on a toothpick and, and do what you want to with it. Do that as much as you need to. So there you go. That's proof of concept here of what uh, I have in mind for all these figures. Now the uh, arm details will be different on every figure just about. Uh, some will only have wristbands, some will only have elbow pads, some will only have gloves, some will have gloves that are yellow on one side and black on the other, some will have no gloves at all, some will have those uh, sleeves that don't really attach to the jersey. I, I call them opera gloves for lack of anything better to call them. Uh, it just really depends and it's going to depend on the type of figure whether that's possible or not, so you know my my plans will change, and I can tell it right there. I need to put some more paint on the corner there on the uh, base plate before I put some brush sealer on this. Uh, I think that's one of the reasons people don't paint their uh, base plates until the very last because they know they're gonna their thumbs and forefingers are gonna take a lot of the paint off. But my goal was to uh, increase the detail on the figure and even I have to admit I've achieved that and uh, now I would love to do these one at a time like this and just you know churn one out every night but that's not practical and I'll tell you why uh, you waste paint 
Uh, it's far more efficient to put your paint out in a palette and go down the assembly line and paint the same details on multiple figures and just use all that paint than it is to drop one drop of paint into the palette and use that for the details on one figure. The, over time that adds up. So this is the way to go. But that's what these are going to look like. Uh, it's going to look real nice once you put the black uh, jersey decals on it. And uh, I'm just looking at it here trying to see if... And when I look at this on the video on playback, maybe I'll see some stuff that I'm not happy with. So I plan to... In fact, it looks like I need to put a little more paint. Uh, black paints there above the left shoe. And that probably happened while I was adding details. Otherwise, I'm, you know, I'm pretty happy with this. Um, looks like I could extend the jersey down just a little on the right arm there to meet up with that stripe. And that's easy. I can do that with toothpick. In fact, I think I'll do that here in just a few minutes. But uh, that's what it's going to look like, folks. Uh, I hope this was instructive. I'm. I'm not much of an artist, but um, I think this looks pretty darn good. And uh, I'm looking forward to getting this batch finished, but it's going to take time. It's going to take a long time. Because I'm taking more time with all these details, this project is going to take more time. The bears took three months, but there was a lot of things that came up. Already in this project, a lot of things have come up. And, you know, I spent the past week working solely on bases. So. That, that was kind of a setback. But hey, this keeps me busy. And uh, I think that's going to look pretty good. Now, I did consider the yellow helmet that the Steelers used to wear with this uniform. But I, I think the black helmet just pops out better with this with this particular uh, outfit. Well, let me know what you think of these. Uh, I, I can't think of any more details to add to the figure. I did try to draw eyes and the uh, sun shadow beneath the eyes with the Sharpie marker. The problem is... On virtually all these Fab Five figures, the faces are so abstract, and the interior of those uh, faces, which are actually, I mean, the truth of the matter is that uh, you're actually supposed to paint uh, the face masks along this ridge. Uh, that's what these are designed for, but, you know, we don't do that anymore because uh, face masks have changed. Oh, there is one detail I forgot to uh, mention. And I'm going to have to turn the uh, light off to show this to you. And this, if you can pull this off, it'll save you $5. I painted on the chin strap. Now, I'm not trying to extend the chin strap out beyond the helmet. I wouldn't even dream of doing that. Uh, you, there's no way, really, not even with a toothpick, to get a nice, thin line the way a, face, uh, a chin strap would work. But um, it's under there. You may not even notice it, but... Uh, it's never going to come off. And, and that's what I like about it. And like I said, now I don't have to buy uh, sheets of chin straps, which I actually have a bunch of them. They just don't stay on. They don't stick very well, even with uh, glue, even with uh, Mod Podge. So that, that issue is eliminated there. Okay. Well, thank you so much for watching this. Um, I'm probably going to watch the rest of this uh, Sunday night game and then head on to bed. And... Uh, Let's just take one more look at it with the strong light at this angle because it's, it's, it's looking pretty good. Um, something to uh, aspire to right there, folks, as far as just trying to uh, push the envelope of details on these figures. This doesn't even approach the uh, quality that you're going to see for those cats in the Miniature Football Coaches Association who... Uh, you know, make those beautiful figures and sell them for four hundred and five hundred dollars a pop, but um, you know, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. Okay. Hope everyone has a great night. Talk to you soon.